If you haven't heard, widgets on iOS can be interactive now, and this is so exciting to me because it presents a new way and a new opportunity for people to use your app. Now, I downloaded the Xcode 15 and iOS 17 betas and did some experimentation, and this is what I came up with. Now let me show you how simple it is to add this interactivity to your widget. Now you might be in one of these two scenarios. Number one, you don't have an app and you don't have a widget. And if that's you, make sure you watch to the end where I'll give you some tips and guidance on what to do. Or you might be part of scenario two where you already have an app that has a widget and you just wanna add some interactivity to that widget. And that's what we're gonna cover right now. Okay, so step one. First, you need to understand what sort of interactivity can you add to your widget in iOS 17. For now, the only interactive elements you can add to your iOS widgets are buttons and toggles. Now step two, you need to understand what actually happens when the user taps on that button or toggle on your widget. So when the user taps on the button or toggle on your widget, an app intent that you've defined gets triggered. If you're unfamiliar with this term, think of an app intent as a piece of functionality that you code that can be executed outside of your app by system services or other apps. For example, your app intent that does something in your app can be triggered by Siri or perhaps the Shortcuts app, and now even through buttons and toggles on your widget. So step two is to create an app intent that performs the task that you wanna trigger when the user taps on that button or toggle on your widget. Now, app intents aren't a new thing in WW23, so I won't cover them in this video. They were actually introduced back in 2020 as a way for your app to interact with SiriKit. I'll include some links in the description to app intent tutorials that you can follow to build one for your own app. And finally, step three, add the button or the toggle to your widget UI. There are new initializers for the Swift UI button and toggle components that you can use in your widget's UI to invoke an app intent when they are triggered. So let's dive into Xcode and take a look at how that works. So here I've got the widget. This is what it looks like so far. There is no interactivity with this widget. It does show a streak though. When I tap on it, it launches the app. Um, and then this is what happens. It updates. But when I tap on it, it just launches the app. So let's dive into the UI code for this widget, which is here. And I'm gonna add a button right under the ring. And I'll show you how easy it is. So there is a new uh, button. There's a new initializer for the button. This one right here, where you can pass in an app intent uh, and then also have a label for what the button looks like. When the button is tapped, it's going to invoke that app intent. So I've already coded one up and all it does is it puts, it logs one streak to the, to the data store, which is just app storage. So we've got that, that's the name of my app intent. And as for the label, I'm gonna show a simple, just plus one. So let's see if that shows up in the preview. I'm also going to add some padding. And it makes the button just a little bit wider and a little easier to tap on. Now, just to remind you, this is Xcode 15 and iOS 17 in beta. So depending on when you're watching this, things may have changed and this also may be buggy because it's beta software, but I still think it's interesting and worth taking a look at how it works. So this is the widget now, it has a button. When I tap on it, you can see that it actually invokes my app intent, which, um, which goes to increase the streak. And you can see how the numbers change. You can see the numbers kind of flipping up that animation right there, animating uh, numerical text is simply with this modifier, this content transition, um, passing in numeric text for the streak. And that's how easy it is to get that effect. It's really cool. Right, and that's how it works. And just like that, you've got an interactive widget. Beautiful. Now what about scenario one, where you don't have an app and you don't have a widget? Well, for starters, Flow's masterclass on how to build widgets with widget kit is a great start. And if you want me to create a walkthrough step-by-step -step video of how I built the streaks app with the interactive widget and having them share the same data, comment below with I love widgets. All right. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more WW23 content. All right. See you next time.